think uh, I think uh, Christina gave a, a very good uh, talk. Actually, she what she has taught me about is a lot of things is overlap what I have talked about. Uh, to summarize, basically we have a hydromechanics framework and the geomechanics and the and these the two things put together that we will accomplish something that we feel that. So what is the objective? Again, the objective here is to understand how water infiltrates into slope and subsequently how landslide occur under seabed infiltration. So that's kind of our objective. In fact, this whole book that Jonathan God, my colleague and I have uh, put together is that, as I said, what we think are most concise, necessary, uh, other discipline relevant to what we try to accomplish in this objective. The framework actually, we feel, we feel that actually we can make a great advance. So the major ingredient is uh, what Christina has mentioned uh, in the, the previous part, the geomechanics part, which gives us the background stress. And then there's the hydrological part. And the hydrological part actually has a feedback effect because it's not only just the, the hill slope get wet and dry, but also there's a mechanical consequence in addition to the gravity due to the gravity geometric and topological effect of the, of the geomechanics force. So that's basically our framework of uh, 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 trying to accomplish it. Uh, to do that, and I think this afternoon, we'll, we'll put everything together. But for now, yesterday, I actually talked about uh, the, the uh, hydrology background. Of course, some of you already know, but we try to put it into a more systematic. Uh, to understand conceptually, we divide to steady and transient. Uh, just for understanding that uh, in, uh, in nature it almost always transient. And then we also, in fact, at the beginning of the first, I talk about the infective stress. I didn't have the opportunity this time to talk about total stress, but that's what the total stress is the background. Because of what you see the, at the larger scale of time and the space scale, why you see a particular mountain has a particular slope, is because of the balance of total stress. Uh, so, but in addition to total stress, then we have the hydrological effect, which is the effective stress additional part, because the effective stress is two parts, right? The total stress and the poor repression in the saturated sense. But under unsaturated or partially saturated condition, the addition of uh, the stress due to water is what I call suction stress, and that has to take into picture. So that's just the one ingredient in addition to the classical geomechanics, and that we bring the hydrological and the mechanical. The other ingredient I would say that is framework is the, uh, the what I call the local factor safety. I will talk about uh, this afternoon. How we can move from one slope, one factor safety, to one slope that is a field of factor safety. In other words, very often you see the slope, in fact, they have a multiple weakness. Uh, some of them in the shallow, for example, very easy. If I understand that even the erosion can cause, if you have a forest fire, I just like what Christine talked about earlier, and then you have a, a, a sufficient uh, vegetation change, you have a sufficient hydrological change. Those uh, can cause the weak in the very shallow, that would mean a decimeter uh, scale. But also you have a much little bit deeper, maybe couple meter scale, somewhere near the bedrock and the soil uh, interface. Maybe then you have another uh, larger scale when the water the seabed is much deeper, and you can have a deep sea landslide. So the, the method that we try to push is just the beginning is the field of factor safety. In fact, that you can identify this multiple uh, failure surface, potential failure surface. So it allows us to, uh, to move forward. So that's a major ingredient for my, uh, for my actually, uh, today's talk, as well as the entire this book. So if you uh, do not have a time, so that's pretty much it, the message that I want to leave. But we can go a little bit, we have a plenty of time. So let's go a little more uh, detail about the, so some of the ingredients which we think is a good part. So first we will talk about the stress. So the stress of the, uh, of the slope is a basic material property. So in other words, as a model, uh, particularly if you do a geomechanics and stability model, uh, what do you need? Hydrological model, what do you need? In other words, can you minimize through the parameter that we can use, no more, no less? So that's kind of thinking, of course, this is subjective, but we will provide you what we think are most important things. And then there's uh, the second part I will talk about, the uh, hydromechanical property, which is more related to hydrology property. But what we have done uniquely in our framework is to relate the hydrological property and the mechanical property together. In other words, it's a couple. So my talk will, will divide a few parts. Uh, first, about the uh, why material fail. So there's a failure mode, different failure mode. Some of them will be under shear, some of them under tensile, uh, some of them will be under combination. 
And then we will talk about the, the shear, what is what we talk about shear strength, where they come from, they come from the friction of the system. And then the shear strength is due to cohesion. So cohesion is one of the concepts that has been widely used, not just in the geotechnical community, but almost all the uh, fields that relate to the uh, landslide. But cohesion, I can tell you, that has been wrongly named. The terminology cohesion itself was not correct. And I will show you why it is not correct. Because by correcting that the concept, that actually we can, uh, we can unify how to analyze the stability. An example is that people think about it. You probably heard about it. People say, oh, the root strength. Root strength is fine, but people sometimes call root cohesion. In other words, root will call cause cohesion. And that kind of concept that we can talk about a little bit more, uh, why it was not a mechanically assigned. And then we will uh, also talk about the, the stress due to the plant. Uh, particular, this is a particular part that uh, we think it's very important, particular, for example, like a forest, a timber uh, forest, uh, uh, the, the harvest of timber uh, industry, as well as the, uh, the undesired natural uh, fire, uh, human anthropology induced uh, forest fire, they can all, always uh, disturb this balance of due to the roots. The roots of the uh, shrub, the roots of the grass, grass sometimes uh, I want to look at the grass. Some of the grass, even though they can grow just one feet or 30 centimeter, the roots could be a couple meters deep. And some of the very tall trees, like 20, 30 meter tree, in fact, the roots could be only just a few meters. So the, all those are very important when we have the disturbance of that, whether it's by timber industry or whether it's by uh, high, uh, the uh, forest fire, they can always disturb that. So it's almost always sure when you have that kind of disturbance. Uh, we're talking about that disturbance will change or alter uh, either the stress or strength in an uh, order of uh, tenth of kPa's. Now, 10, 20, 30 kPa. And that's a sufficient to almost you can always guarantee you if you have a forest uh, that has the 20 to 30 uh, kPa's uh, disturbance of uh, stress, and you will have a landslide. And that's a part of my optimistic part about uh, the prediction of the landslide, that the initiation of the landslide. I think that we are, if we can combine all the uh, the state of art, the different discipline, and we are at about a stage where we have some confidence you know, to uh, assess when we have this kind of uh, disturbance in nature. And then we will talk about the, uh, the shear strength under very stringent conditions. I won't go through this part a lot because this is basically the, uh, anybody study uh, soil mechanics, you should know that, uh, that under the different kind of drainage part is one of the important things. Uh, for the for the strategic design, but I will just very quickly go through that because of the time limit. You can go back to the my uh, slides or go uh, to, to to review that part. And then we talk about unified way. In other words, how we can treat the, the roots, uh, the the traditional uh, cohesion, all those concepts of frictional tensile into a, into a one framework. What we call the unified trade on shear strength. Because we only doing so, we can minimize the necessity to define the material property, and then those property could be measured in some many cases that you relate to the hydrological behavior. And I will draw a summary uh, of that. Um, so the, uh, I want to uh, start with uh, what are the parameters that in the framework of what, I, what we think of the hydromechanic framework. So I'm summarizing actually only a few of them here. Uh, what are those? And if you look at that, uh, first uh, you will see, you will know that uh, this is the classical uh, property that we will look at that. Friction angle, cohesion, sometimes we call it internal friction angle. And cohesion of the material, which is the interception of the, uh, of the shear stress axis. And those are, those are our new, those are all the classical ones we need to know. And then the hydraulic uh, property, very often people measure the central hydraulic property. That's very important. So that's uh, something that uh, already there. And then if you go through the variable saturated, now we found saturated to unsaturated part, you need to expand a few parameters. And what are those? One is the, uh, the velocity. Actually, this part again is not something new. Most cases, when you uh, try to classify soil or to classify a uh, hill slope material, you want to know what is the velocity. But then there's another uh, three parameters that actually attached to, specifically attached to, partial research or unsaturated. One is what we call the residual module content. Uh, the residual module content concept that in the soil water retention has been quite well established, although it's still somewhat controversial. But it is something that you can quantify that by doing experiment. Uh, the other two, one is the, uh, the, the post-size contribution parameters. In other words, the phenomenon we are talking about, the full flow process, as well as the stress phenomenon, it has a lot to do with the, how the post-size distributed, in other words, the large size, small size, intermediate size, and, and, the, and the, each part of the ingredients. And the other thing is about the, the air entry value. 
And the air engine bay, basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pressure at a which that you saw your start the experience from century to century. In fact, the more important to most of the landslide is the water entry back, which is the other end when you saw have soil starting from dry and then go to wet. At the what point uh, actually the soil be, become fully saturated because that's the point that you have a sudden experience of the particle stress difference uh, that uh, decrease and consequently you have the debris flow of the landslide. So if you look at the, what, what the entire book we talk about, uh, boil down to the most simple parameter necessary. This is the hydromechanics, the entire framework. The, the three parameters for saturated actually is for, for mechanical as well as for hydraulic. For example, if you want to know how the water distributed in terms of transient condition, how the uh, moisture distributed as well as the suction, you need to know these three parameters because those three parameters plus this one, as we talked about this yesterday, it defines your soil water characteristic and hydraulic function. And in addition, uh, yesterday I talked about unified package stress. It also defined the interparticle stress. So that's a framework that we have been trying to build. Uh, quite simple. Uh, but you can also, for some of you probably know that some background of the uh, circuit soil mechanics. There are people who try to develop, uh, not looking at the stress, but looking at the stress. So if you look at the stress, they will develop a, a, a different kind of failure criteria. But essentially, they it down to those parameters that they define. Number one is there are a lot of parameters which is somewhat impaired, that's fine. But the second, those parameters will never be able to reconcile or interconnect with the hydrological property. So that's kind of the major frame, uh, difference between our framework and those uh, uh, out of the popular framework. And these are actually, if you look at the numbers, those numbers is to give a pretty precise uh, uh, range in other words, the bar. Of course, I use the typical set, seal the clay, but if you have a something, yesterday somebody asked you, if you have somewhere between a mix of them, then you, you, you can categorize it still within these boundaries. They all within these boundaries. So the, the task, uh, as I will talk about uh, the second, uh, the, the rest of it this morning, is how we can categorize, you know, conduct the shear stress test, how we can categorize those, uh, uh, the, those unsaturated parameters, which allow us to know so the characteristic hydraulic conductivity function and the saturated test characteristic. So that's kind of a, a roadmap. And now let's understand about the material and why it fail and how it fail. So the what is the definition of fail? Actually, this the self answer to that is not unique. Uh, it could be strength, it could be strength, it could be a combination of two. If you look at the literature, some people think about material fail and it reaches a certain kind of stress state. Uh, the material failure, if you use a stress state uh, as a way to, to do it, it's very funny. They are not like that. You give it just one stress value because stress is a quantity, it's a three dimension. Not only they have a normal stress at three dimensions, whatever coordinate you have established, but also the shear components. So, normal shear components. In the minimum case that we know that in the three dimension or in one point, you will not be able to define the state of stress. You need to have six components. So, three normal components and part of three shear components. But so the thing that we use those as three components, a combination. So uh, again, this is the funny thing. Sometimes you can think about the third direction. If you have confined, or uh, if you have, don't have confined, that just changes the stress in the other two directions that you're interested about. So that's based on the uh, stress, but there's a strain too, because uh, a lot of material, they're kind of ductile material. Uh, whether you, you consider about failure or not, sometimes it has to use a uh, strain, or a combination of stress and strain. And th those are very, uh, why not become more, more popular. In other words, the stress and strain has a, the failure condition has some kind of couple effect. And what the theory uh, most uh, captured in, in soil mechanics is uh, uh, a group of, uh, in 1960s at uh, Cambridge University. Uh, some people know that they, they create a theory called critical state soil mechanics. Uh, what that says is that traditionally, up to that point, that the soil the mechanics and soil mechanics will use the stress as a state to describe failure. But then you see that a lot of material, particularly uh, like a clay type of material, uh, whether it's a consolidated or over consolidated, normally consolidated, they behave as a lot of strain. So the uh, Cambridge group created this uh, the, 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 the space in addition to stress, but also to do with the strain. Sometimes you use avoid the ratio. So that's kind of a, a background. Uh, so the classical concept is based on the strength, as I said. Uh, the, those are the uh, basically background. Now let's look a little bit more about the, uh, the, the behavior that. Uh, how we look at that, because uh, in the world that uh, we were talking about is uh, 
we, we can think about that. I've been discussing with students, in particular several students in the last couple of days, and some of the researchers. Is the, in our world, what we think about it is about the important thing. Of course, it's one respect to look at the, uh, you know, the uh, object. The ten artists, uh, you know, if you want to draw the same object, they have a ten different kind of vision. A million, and we have a million vision. So our vision, in some ways, is a lot of things that can happen. You can have the temperature due to the first fire. You can have the, the, the precipitation. You can have the volcano. You can have the, uh, you name it, all different kind of reasons. But after all, a slope, whether we stand there or whether we have a failure, it is a determining factor. It is the stress here. Uh, how the stress here compared to the stress. So that's basically our idea. And look at how they fail. And I draw here the, the, the couple of the, uh, the situation that can be a unilateral tensile. So in other words, you can have a material just by pulling apart. When you do that, uh, you will draw this kind of more surface, so stuff on the dash that is not failing. But at some point, they no longer be able. So very often you will see the crack. Uh, so in the hill slope environment, very often you will see this kind of failure more uh, at the crust of the slope. And if you re look at my book, I have a chapter about total stress, which I don't have the time to talk about. Depending on the slope geometry, depending on material property, some of the slope, for example, nearly vertical, they can always uh, uh, promote the tensile stress on the crust of the slope. So under the gravity, they're already under the tensile. So if you have a little bit of water or something, they can start trigger there. So that's uh, one of the important to, to, the, to the failure of the... Uh, and also a combination near the toe, sometimes you see the crack too. And that is due to the combination of shear and, and, and then there's one type. The other one you can do a unilateral compression. So just a, a sample, you can just you know, squeeze them in the one direction. And when you do that, at some point you will see it's a shear band. Uh, in other words, the very distinguished uh, the, the angle, which is 45 degrees past the half of the uh, friction angle. And that is what, uh, this kind of state. So it's a dash line style as you increase and then go to that plate and then and we'll ultimately they reach some limit. So that is the uh, unilateral compression. And so that is the uh, unilateral compression and then the shear failure. And the reason we call shear is uh, what makes uh, this, uh, uh, this material reach the limit is this line. So this is what we call the failure envelope. And this failure envelope is by a uh, very important uh, the name we call shear is because you always have the maximum and minimum stress, no matter whether tensile or this. The maximum and minimum differences is cost. If you do a rotation, you will find that you will be rotated to uh, a, 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 shear, a shear stress maximum, which is uh, somewhere here on the, in that case. So that is uh, just a failure mode. The shear mode is very often, uh, if you look at the slope, uh, if you look at the middle portion of the slope, or if you draw uh, you know, your, your, your imagination of the failure surface, the uh, majority part of the slope actually is shear. So that's why uh, very often we, we talk about the shear failure, shear resistance of the slope. Because most of those parts, there's both directions compressive. So now if you draw the wall circle, they will be like this. Both are compressive on the positive directions. But somewhere near the toe or near the crust, that you can have this kind of stress. In other words, one side is the tensile, the other side is the compressive. The vertical typically is a compressive because of the gravity. But horizontally, depending on your confining condition. So, so this is a more uh, uh, generalized to uh, you know nonlinear. Now, what, what's funny about this uh, this, this envelope of, of the limit of the stress state for a particular material is that they, they have some limit, and this limit is not linear. But very often, if it's not linear, the problem becomes very complicated, and then we usually would say, okay, that maybe it's good for certain accuracy, but uh, uh, to catch the first idea and typically want to be simplified, and very typical we do that by more global criteria. Uh, so that is uh, uh, the, the general concept of failure. Of course, uh, uh, consequent to the failure, it also has a stress, a strain. So in other words, if you do an experiment uh, to, to compress a sample, while you monitor how much stress you're going to increase, you also monitor how much deformation it is. And material like a, a, a rock and soil also be very funny, and gen this is a general way that how they behave. And they can have a little bit of uh, this concave uproar and beginning because of the material always imperfect in some kind of crack. And after that, they start to the close, they start to have linear. And then they start to have this nonlinear behavior. And then reach some kind of peak. And this figure usually is what we call a stretch. Uh, in other words, that is how much you can give the material to, to, to store the energy by uh, applying the external law. And beyond that point, then it's up to what kind of material. If you have a very dark material, they actually can go uh, 
horizontally, in other words, without too much change of the stress, they're going to have a lot of the strength, uh, just like plaster. But if you have a very brittle material like grass, and some of the brittle material, and some of the rock, and they can actually suddenly decrease. And if they decrease to some value, they can decrease to almost zero, and then continue to go. Now the reason they can do continue is this is the frictional behavior, and they can still keep. But if you unload that one, then you have also called the hysteresis. In other words, you're not going to go back to the same thing because it's a non-linear material, and so you can have all this kind of proof. So that's kind of general behavior, and this is all classical, and you can go back to uh, So the material will be uh, quite complicated. And so why bother uh, to, to categorize the stress free relation? Uh, in a simple answer, is we want to predict, assess the, uh, the earth structure as the figure state and deformation state. And very often, the, the material have a consequent deformation. But one thing I want to uh, talk about, uh, I want to mention, is uh, in the landslide, uh, I've been to many countries. And uh, most popular modern thing in landslide is to do a uh, dis displacement uh, modeling, whether it's surface or subsurface. And I, I have my own opinion about that because uh, when, because the material, as we show here, are highly nonlinear. Uh, you measure displacement, sometimes it can move faster. It can only tell you, okay, that's not good. You you uh, you wish you don't, they don't move. But it doesn't mean that it's going to fail. And many of the material after they move, they're still okay. And uh, you know they can move it. Uh, 5 meter, 10 meter, 20 meter, without a catastrophic kind of uh, event. So, but why people want to measure displacement? Uh, for a very simple reason, because the technology is better. And it is not just a variable, it is one of the best, you know, to measure the, uh, the displacement. We can have a remote sensing right now, even though we put it in a sensor. We can have the, uh, the, the, the on ground and different kind of measurement, uh, LIDARs, all those technology. I'm not saying that you should not use it, but it is good, but you have to think about why you want to do so. So, I mean, to go to a lot of places, they spend millions of dollars, uh, uh, you know, to, to put on those instrumentation. Then I ask them, they say, can you tell me what's behind, why you want to do that? You can't answer that question. No, that's all. <laughs> but that's my criticism. But on the other hand, I think that why you have a displacement, there's always a reason. The reason is stress. Of course, how to relate stress strain is somewhat complicated, but it is stress that causes displacement. And that no, no object will have any deformation if we don't change the stress. So that's of course a uh, sure thing, right? That this is the stress that causes the material uh, to have a displacement. So if you look at that, I'm not going to go into detail the different stages I just described, but they have a very different behavior. But one thing that's very important is the slope. The slope is the one that we call the module. In other words, uh, corresponding to each, how much stress you're going to have and how much deformation. Because, and then the, uh, the, the, the modular sometimes also could be different uh, depending on what kind of stage. That gives you some indication about the material. If you take the rock, for example, sample or soils, and you conduct it uh, in the lab, and you do this kind of type, type test, you will know the, the modular. So when you do monitoring, if you can uh, use uh, some kind of interpretation to see how that corresponds to modular, because the modular changes uh, as, as the state of stress changes. Uh, so that's uh, something that you can understand. And of course, uh, the behavior uh, in, in particular for soil, uh, the different kind of behavior. Uh, in the soil mechanics, uh, the basically we, we consider, uh, you know, to help the conceptually, we, we think about one is called the loose material. Uh, loose material uh, typical uh, uh, normally consolidate, which means that, that particular material never, the stress of state never exceeds the history. And the other one we call it a dense material or the overly consolidated, which means that at the past history, geologically, uh, that particular material, that uh, particular point that you're interested in, has experienced more stress than what, than what they experience today. So that's called overly consolidated. Or the denser sand, if you look at this. But then these two materials behave quite differently. Uh, in what sense, or as you see that, usually the dense material is brittle behavior, uh, dense soil, or overly consolidated soil. They have brittle uh, behavior. And the loose soil or the normally consolidated. So if you have a marine, uh, sediment, which is still under normal consolidation, that was still accumulating, still fighting, and that's actually under normal consolidation. When you have a normal consolidation, you have this kind of softer effect that it, instead of this brittle effect, and you have this uh, actual behavior. And consequently, if you measure the, the, the vertical displacement, you don't know whether the volume uh, is going to uh, increase or decrease. Uh, very interesting, you find that when you apply the shear stress, it's not necessarily always a decrease. Uh, some material will, will actually have a, a, a compression. Uh, like loose material. But if you have a, a dense material, overly consolidated material, they actually it's going to, body is going to expand. And these are all well understood in the classical framework of soil mechanics. 
But fundamentally, the material we are talking about has ability to resist the shear. Uh, the shear do what? Do the friction of the egg. So this is the frictional model. It's just like a block, a smooth block or some kind of uh, rough block. And you put a, a surface, you put a block on top of that. And then you start to observe what is the behavior between the block and the surface. As soils and rock, they are sinking, but it's called internal because the internal at the particle level they're not as simple as uh, uh, cosmographically as this uh, smooth surface. But mechanically, it's the same, just a very complicated. So locked together, sometimes we call the friction angle. So when you that material is subject to whether it's tensile or whether it is uh, the, uh, the, the 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 normal stress, uh, it. The most vulnerable is the shear, so it's the internal shear. The internal shear that we can come for, and we have to take care of that one. So that is lumping the parameter we call the friction angle. So in the slope is how much you mobilize the friction angle. So in, in the community people, in, in geomechanics we say, if you mobilize it to foot strength, then you are about fair. But if you less than that, then you are not about fair. In fact, that is the very center concept of the factor safety. A lot of people hear the factor safety, uh, have a different explanation, but one line it is how you mobilize the shear uh, in kind of friction. So that is a kind of uh, uh, the, the basic concept. And I won't go through this uh, detail about uh, this uh, the friction of behavior. So the friction angle is one of the very important things, and you can characterize that based on materials uh, uh, relative density or velocity. So the sum of work has been done, and you can even actually uh, look at the, the, the third direction stress effect. In other words, if you have a third direction, this is also has an implication because for a landslide, if you have a very long, uh, long uh, in the third direction, long axis uh, slope, it will be different than if you have just a little bump because the lateral constraint is much less. And in, that, in those cases, the, the change is the internal uh, friction angle or the strength. And so that's uh, one of the things. Now uh, here is the uh, the situation that uh, you can look at the uh, cohesion. So here is I want to explain why. It, I said that there's some, some confusion even today about cohesion. Uh, we, we draw that, uh, you can look at the, uh, uh, the, where the cohesion comes from. Now, what is cohesion? So, cohesion is what we mean, the community has been used extensively uh, at this point. Now, it's the failure of uh, interception at, 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 the, at the vertical or the shear axis. So, if you draw the state of stress at this point, actually, it is on the shear condition. Now, if you look at the word, English word cohesion, Cohesion means a kind of a boundary. It should be a normal direction. But in fact, it is not because normal stress you have to draw in the horizontal axis. So, cohesion, in fact, what is cohesion? Where does it come from? Because even you have a material like a, uh, like a sealed clay, uh, you do have a cohesion when you do this uh, test, you will see the interception. But if you have a sand, dry sand, or saturated sand, you don't have a cohesion because they will be behaving like that and that will go through this axis. So what makes this cohesion exist is, is this interception here. So this point, even though if there are points, if you want to draw the state of stress, in fact this point has a, a considerable amount of stress, it's all tensile isotopic. So it's not at this point because the more circle is zero, uh, they are zero, it's, it's not, it's the magnitude of this much. Uh, the more circle it reflected the shear stress. Now it reflected the maximum minimum differences and uh, it can be related. So what causes uh, traditional material has cohesion? In fact, uh, it is because the material has a bounding, has a real cohesion. What I call true cohesion. What is true cohesion? And that's the term I use for something stress. So if you look from that point of view, uh, in fact, the material you don't need to have a cohesion and friction angle. You only need to have a friction angle because the cohesion is it's existing uh, in the particle stress. But it will change. We, the reason in so many cases we don't. We, Treat as constant is because we do such a soil mechanics. Under such a condition, that part of the internal friction uh, angle due to the interparticle bonding never changes because uh, the interparticle bonding is dependent on the saturation. So that way actually we can think, simplify a lot because if you look at the two parameters, in fact the, the C parameter it is a, it is coupled with this one. But the exact relation is right here. So if you have a saturated uh, Material, you do a test and you get this line. You say, okay, my friction angle is 30 degree, and I can tell you. Then you can say, what what makes this uh, cohesion? Let's say to the pen. What makes the difference is is, is, is actually this this real cohesion. You need to know that real cohesion. 
because the real cohesion basically you can back calculate by you know tangent of this vision angle equal to uh, co cohesion divided by this uh, uh, sucking strength. So you can calculate at the such a dimension what is good true cohesion or what is true sucking stress. But such a changes. So that's the framework that we push to from saturated to unsaturated. Once you become unsaturated, uh, this but this these numbers it, it's a water water kind of depend or something. But we also eliminate the one unnecessary because you uh, the additional way that we call the cohesion it's actually not it's a shear stress. It's mobilized and depend on how you mobilize. So that's a, a concept that, that you, uh, we have a, a look at that um, differently. And of course, these are how the condition relate to the, uh, if you have a nonlinear behavior, which I will not talk too much about here. Um, so the cohesion, in fact, uh, can relate to the uh, tensile stress uh, in a very simple uh, way, the Euros triangular one. And if you think about it, yesterday I presented a generalized uh, uh, effective stress, in other words, suction stress. So the relation between suction stress and cohesion and the partial suction condition it's a it's the same relation, and so basically you have a different kind of you can think about vertical axis right now called tensile stress, which actually is ten, uh, suction stress, and suction stress even convert to cohesion, so by just kinds of tangent of friction angle, and so this curve that you see now is somewhat familiar for sand, for silk, for clay, it actually varied for all cohesion uh, under very different kind of saturation, saturated and saturated. Different kinds of soil, they all can be bad. So it's, it's, it's as simple uh, as these things. Now let's come back to uh, the other topic that also I think some of you probably interested is the vegetation effect. And vegetation will change the uh, tensile strength. And in the literature, there are people who actually pursue the tensile strength of the different kinds of tree uh, uh, roots. For example, uh, Kevin Schmidt of the USGS, uh, you know, tried to do the PhD dissertation and spend the time on the hills. So uh, putting those those roots, you know, measure how much tensile stress. But that's a, that's good because tensile stress, as I said, tensile stress is exactly the uh, suction stress. But then you can convert to uh, what people, some other people, they call uh, uh, the root cohesion. Because if you can the tension and tangent angle, that becomes root cohesion. So root cohesion is a concept actually. It, it, it's not an uh, original. Uh, it's it's not independent. It depends on friction angle and the suction stress or tensile stress. But if you look at this, uh, this is what the, uh, the, the behavior dynamic on, on the hill slope. When you have a disturbance of the environment of vegetation, and very often those disturbances could be a, a climate change, it could be due to anthropology, or could be a natural process. But at the human time scale, most of what we see a lot to do with the uh, anthropology uh, reason. So if you look at the, the tree, if you cut the tree, so these are the examples of different kind of uh, place around the world. Uh, if you cut those trees, different species, uh, over the years, over the months here, uh, the tree root strength is going to, uh, root tensile strength is going to decrease. And it can decrease substantially uh, from uh, tens of kph. So I'm thinking uh, it's very important to recognize the all the magnitude, particularly at the, for graduate student at the level, when you deal with a uh, uh, natural slope, you have to have a concept about how much stress is going to change. I'm saying that the, the, the tens of kph, even several kph, this, Kilopascal, this is some concept. If you have a natural disturbance or human disturbance at that order, then you have to pay something. So, uh, just put a very simple, uh, you know, uh, uh, one kph is about the 10 centimeter of water, and if you dip your finger to the bottom of that, and you feel one kph is of stress. So, that's how much of the stress it can be. But I can tell you uh, that one kph, in fact, it can cause a, a large scale that stuff. And this has been shown in some part of the world. So, those are the roots uh, changes dynamically. Uh, typically, they can change is the start, let's say, this material about 50 kPa, and they can reduce to about 10 kPa. And sometimes we completely lost the strength uh, of the year. Of course, uh, how long it takes to depend on location. You know, some places are much more moisture, so those are very easy to decay. Some places are a little bit more dry. But generally, you can see that the message is that when you have the uh, disturbance of the nature, it's going to have a change of tens. So the tens of K years of stress uh, in the near surface environment. And that's a, many of the shallow that's that can occur. But on the other hand, if you are planting new trees, uh, this is typical after many uh, forest uh, 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 harvest, and you plant new trees, and you start to gradually establish the roots uh, of, of the stress, of tensile stress. And typically, uh, this is also increased in, in such a fashion. So if you want to combine and think about applying the fact that what is disturbance of the nature 
and due to the vegetation, they actually experience this from original state to go down to, to reach a minimum, and then it gradually increase. And typically, this is after 10 years. At least, this happened based on some of the study, the systematic study, at least have a decade or even longer before they can establish the original state. So what I say is that during this period, it's very vulnerable uh, to have a landslide. In fact, uh, uh, there are some uh, very detailed studies indicating that the landslide actually occurred. Uh, it's about this, uh, this five years or something around that time, and we have a disturbance. And that is the scale of the land, uh, landslide we talk about uh, uh, several meters. Now there's a there's a also uh, you can you, depending on how you define debris flow is actually kind of landslide uh, year after the or even a month after the, the forest fire and that's in the shallow case okay that's also an impact in the shallow case uh, it's a failure of the material too so uh, of course the tree how can we study how, why why the tree has a, a stretch uh, it's as I said the original tree uh, a, a sheer stretch or whatever you call or of, of root cohesion, it actually comes from the tensile ability because the roots has a strong way to, to, to resist them. But that depends on the root structures. Uh, so different kind of root structure has a different kind of uh, the, uh, the way of the reinforced soil. And of course, a different kind of vegetation, uh, if you look at a different depth, and they also depend on the uh, different kind of species, they, they can have a different kind of uh, magnitude of increase. Uh, typically, I draw the conceptual model, if you have grass, uh, short grass, the edge can increase up to you know, 10 to 15 to 50 years in the shallow uh, or the half to 1 meters of the strength of the material. And if you have the uh, shrub and the bed, they go a little bit large, maybe 20, 25, and then maybe go to uh, more than a uh, meter of the depth. But if you have a tree, typically they can reverse up to uh, 2 3 meters of, of, the, of the material, shallow material. Uh, so very often you see that the, the timber uh, industry after the harvest. The, the landslide occurred, uh, for example, in Japan, in the northwest uh, uh, and, uh, of the United States. Very often you see the two, three meters of landslide occur uh, because of the disturbance of this uh, uh, strength that we can rely on. And you can also dig into detail how, how the tensile strength that can convert to shear. Because as I said, uh, even the roots grow on the top of the, uh, of the, of the slope, they may be uh, directly used to resist the tensile. But most of the root on the hill slope, and in fact, it's the under shear uh, environment. So, this diagram is a, is a basic synthesis of some of the classical work uh, to think about how you can mobilize uh, 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 root tensile stress or tensile stress. It's just like a, a suction stress. Through the shear stress, that actually could be a vulnerable to, let's say, this is a potential failure plane. And so, there is a, a way that you can calculate, and some work uh, empirical, and in fact, uh, it is quite incredible, but at some point, uh, and then they will basically say, if you look at the uh, look at the, uh, the tensile strength of the of the roots, you can convert that one to uh, shear uh, strength or or, or call a root cohesion, which is one turn in some way, and by uh, times factor one point two. So that's a kind of uh, uh, the empirical, and also you can look at the sound of the literature. Uh, there are models that you uh, by Poland uh, Simons and by uh, and and those people actually use a, a new way to uh, study land study called a uh, bundle model, hyper bundle model. Uh, so the idea is like uh, if you have a if you have a, a, a like a, like a rope, you have many many fibers. So one fiber break, the energy will be distributed to nearby. And so whether they will be have a catastrophic or not, it depends on how they will distribute to the to the other rooms. Uh, so that's called a fiber bundle model. Some uh, there is some mechanical thinking there, but it is not a. Uh, uh, it is not a follow the tradition of continuing mechanics. But that's a very much emphasized in many of them because if you look at those studies, very often they, they start from the uh, forest because they start from the tree vegetation. So they think about it, uh, the thinking is uh, those things play the important role. In some way, this is why because uh, the slope already there, the, why they, the, in addition to that, they have the roots there. So the background total stress already exists uh, somewhere balanced off. Right, in the natural environment. So the roots is the additional one. So if they capture those additional one, they may be able to develop some kind of empirical or semi-empirical model which is predict some kind of landslide. But the uh, bottom line is that, that this tensile strength eventually will, uh, will convert to the, uh, to the, to the uh, strength. And different kind of a tree, uh, you can also, the root strength, tensile strength also depend on... See, uh, uh, very interesting about the tensile strength is, tensile stress is uh, 
we talk about stress. So if, once you convert the tensile force to tensile stress, then you can talk about mechanical equivalent to other stress. So that's one of the uh, things. So when you do tensile stress, it's very interesting is that you, you study the roots. Uh, that actually, it actually uh, inverts to the diameter. In other words, the, the small roots diameter has a larger strength. And then, then, the, then, the, then, the, then the larger diameter, stress, not the total. Total it has to times the area, right? The, the stress times the area. Now, why so? Uh, it's also some uh, in, in research that people can, can hear, pursue. Uh, one of the uh, thinking is uh, uh, if you have a small rules, you have a larger surface area, specific surface, in the divide by cross section. And uh, the root cell typically grows strong on the surface, then inside. So therefore, if you have a small uh, the roots that you have a larger uh, outside area, and then you, you, the, 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 the tensile strengths uh, become stronger. But these are some of the data. This is uh, by some of the people uh, measure over the world, and then I put it here that you can actually use some kind of uh, empirical uh, relation and they put it there. And you can look at those data and you can see how the different kind of uh, species of trees, shrubs, uh, depend on the, uh, the root strengths. You can also uh, look at this uh, uh, the time effect. I'm saying that when you have the new tree, uh, you need to establish the uh, strength. So there's another is uh, called the sigmoidal model, uh, which is uh, put out by uh, by some people. And that model basically is this kind of shape. The start from the zero and then go up, and then has some kind of some value. And that model is by uh, a quite a number of parameters. It's very empirical. In, in this case, like four parameters. Um, how you determine those properties, they have to do the uh, study, for example. Uh, so they do the study, multi years study, and they actually uh, fit for those parameters uh, to capture the uh, increase of the, of the strength due to the group. So that's kind of the cover. And then the K group. So, same thing for the K, you know, the, the K model, which is an exponential model, and uh, somewhere you can figure the data. And in that case, you need also some uh, integral parameters. Now, if you put these two together, as I said, then you can, you can understand a particular health slope as uh, the impact into the vegetation uh, uh, the effect. Uh, in this case, there is a sustainable, uh, there is a, a sustainable uh, period where the uh, land cycle can occur, and you can categorize that. And somebody already done so, in fact, a very detailed um, Kevin Schmidt uh, at the USGS, for example, as I mentioned, uh, when he was still a uh, student uh, uh, with the uh, uh, first of all, Bill Dietrich, and then with uh, Dave Montgomery, and then he spent uh, uh, some, some years actually on the slope to measure those, uh, how they decay, how they increase, and how they uh, there's some kind of another disturbance that cause this curve to change, and what is the combination of them. So those are the studies you can see that, and those studies, the, you can see that actually very much uh, coincide, this is the model prediction, this is the weakest one, and this is where the next slide occurs. And, and same thing for here, and these are the model uh, predicted something. And then you can see that the lens at uh, the, uh, the, uh, the side, the lens line uh, somewhere a little bit after the minimum. Uh, so that indicates maybe the additional reason, for example, uh, when they reach the minimum, and then they have uh, next year, you can have a rain come down, and that put additional shading and uh, cause lens line. So, but, 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 but I think that this approach, uh, it seems like uh, that for the root uh, analysis, is, I think it's quite useful. Um, so it's for us, we can put it in the model, and it gives us a better, uh, you can still improve. Uh, if you think it necessary, but in put the context of the recognize the, the, the tree roots uh, is tensile, and tensile that actually eventually can convert to shear strength. And the shear strength will decrease and then will increase. It will have some period where it's something the most vulnerable. Uh, so that's a part of like the uh, tree roots strength. And I also put it in my uh, handout, you can download from the website after this, is uh, some of the, uh, the, uh, the the classical uh, saturated soil mechanics, what they are chasing for. They are chasing for uh, a cohesion, friction angle. So I put it as the summary. I'm not going to go through that because basically, uh, you, you, you grab any soil mechanics book, uh, uh, in most typically in civil engineering undergraduate textbook, they talk about this. So we essentially, the, uh, how people uh, to characterize the cohesion, friction angle is that they will do a, either called direct shear, which is kind of like a, a high vertical stress and then a high heat. Uh, fix as a constant, just like uh, you have a gram heat, uh, and then fix it, and then increase the shear stress. When you do that, uh, you can fail material. And if you plot it into the uh, traditional uh, space of the shear stress and normal stress, you will draw a different more circle. At some point, they're going to reach the uh, 
at the maximum. But if you do that in solo circle, for example, like in this two circle, uh, we know that the law of Bloom Cartier has only two parameters. It's a linear equation. Uh, it has two parameters, C and, and the V, and then you can actually uh, identify these two. And of course, there are also under different kind of drainage equation, and that's the differences between the soil mechanics and other this uh, solid mechanics that we have to consider about water. So effectively, it's the one dominating one. So triangle shell become very popular because uh, uh, you can do that under manipulating of the cold pressure. Uh, but typically, you, you, you do triangle shell, in fact, it's not triangle shell. Because if you look at this carefully, it's a cylindrical sample, and you use a, a latex membrane, isolate that one. You apply vertical stress, which we call dimitory, or call the maximum stress. Uh, but then you, you apply all around stress, which is horizontal, uh, in a horizontal direction. So, in, 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 strictly speaking, it's a bi action test, because the second stress and the third stress are the same magnitude. But that's, a, that's very easy to manipulate because you can do a core or sample. If you do a real, uh, real charger, or truly charger, you have to do a cubic. So how you prepare a sample of a cubic, that becomes very challenging. And how you apply the stress at the cubic also becomes challenging. It's durable, but at the moment, I think that there is a lot of challenging because the size, you have to use some kind of rubber and it costs the formula effect. But most people study uh, just yeah, use this, uh, uh, the triaxial cell that allow you to manipulate the board pressure, which can mimic uh, uh, the institute condition. So those are, uh, if you use that one, you can also get a, a traditional uh, type of, uh, of, of, of the shear strength test. And as I said, I won't go too detail about this. Essentially, what boils down to is to know the uh, friction angle and the cohesion. So I want to use this, uh, then, then we can unify that. So I want to use this slide to show the how we unify that. And then we will unify that, as I said. That if you look at the shear stress now, you will look at with the vegetation, consider about saturated and unsaturated, and the failure criteria is still be the same form, like the traditional shear stress is equal to cohesion, but the cohesion has many plants, a uh, number of plants, and then, and then plus the, uh, and the trees, so this could be uh, due to the, uh, uh, the internal uh, shear locking, it could be due to the, uh, the different kind of unsaturated effect due to the roots, and then, and then the total stress due to the failure. So you can unify that one because each of those, if you can realize this one, each of these can be categorized. Uh, specifically, this is the saturated condition. And this is the three groups you need to conduct uh, the three groups uh, uh, experiment. And uh, this is the, what I call a saturated stress, that depends on the saturation. It could be saturated, it could be unsaturated, variable. So all those terms are there, and then you can use a one very condensed. And this is, this is basically uh, the Well, the, I already showed that each of those terms, in fact, you can spread it into a, it's a mobilization of the tensile stress to, through friction angle. That previous yeah. correlation, yeah. each of them. Yeah. So, but although each of them, the tensile stress could be a different origin. For example, you have three loops, it's because of three tissues that increase the tensile stress. But they can mobilize that to shear stress in the scale slope environment. Same thing for the suction stress, because of the unsaturated, because of capillarity, because of physical chemical force. They can lump into what I call suction stress, but that suction stress is uh, isotropic. In other words, it's, uh, it's normal to the to the contact of particle, but that also can be mobilized to shear stress. So, in, in a sense, that basically that's where each of the terms uh, come from. There, and so you can put uh, this one, and then uh, uh, I didn't write the intermediate step. Basically, each of them can spread into two terms. One is the friction angle, the other one is the uh, bonding stress, the real two bonding stress. So that's how we unify that. I don't know whether that explains that uh, curiosity or yeah, something. I have to think a little bit. Yeah, we, yeah, definitely. We can, we can continue to, uh, to exchange it for that. So basically, I, I think uh, uh, in, 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 in the world, when we think about it, we try to, our motivation again is uh, can, we, can we minimize the problem? Uh, can, we, can, we, can we tackle the problem that we are interested in, which in this case is uh, to predict the initiation against that? the minimum parameter you need. And also inherent to what people have done, hydrological and mechanical. And so that's basically the eight parameters uh, that we, we talk about. Some things already in the classical, but you don't need to go to the insecticide soil mechanics. And the other is basically uh, hydrology and parameter, which also in our case, because we treat the hydrology, the consequence of hydrology is a mechanical, which is a suction stress. And you can you can one to one relate to that. So that is basically uh, my uh, first part of the talk.
We can take a, a little break uh, and then if you have any questions, we can discuss them before I have a second. Thank you.